Does anyone remember the name Elijah McLean? Elijah McLean's the young 23-year-old black man out in Aurora, Colorado. Maybe this is beginning to sound familiar. In any event, Elijah left home late one night just to walk down to a local convenience store, pick up a few items, and he never returned home. Why? Why did three Aurora, Colorado police officers responding to a 911 call go hands-on, torture Elijah for the next 15 minutes? That's not my, Those aren't my words. Those are the words from the McLean family civil rights attorney out of Denver. And then after beating Elijah into the ground, summoned paramedics who arrived and promptly pumped Elijah full of ketamine. Elijah was pronounced dead three days later. What happened? Why did this happen? What was it that set this whole series of events in motion? And that's what I want to talk about. Guys, my name is D.B. McCray. I'm the author of Rise of the Oathbreakers. You might have heard of it. It's a 300-page expose on bad policing in the United States, in particular after 9-11. And in particular from that is See Something, Say Something. See Something, Say Something, you know, at this point after 9-11 has nothing to do with See Something, Say Something that might be interpreted as potential terrorist act. Oh, no. The average American citizen has taken See Something, Say Something and use it to report to law enforcement activities that are not criminal. There's no crime afoot. There's no one in danger. But they simply don't understand or don't like what it is they're seeing. And that's what I want to talk about. That is so important of what happened here in the case of the murder of Elijah McLean. I want you to picture this. Elijah leaves the convenience store, right? Minding his business. He's not doing anything wrong. And let's just say 99 people saw Elijah. 99 saw Elijah doing the very same thing that the 911 caller saw. And they didn't say anything. Whatever it was Elijah was doing, they thought nothing of it. It only took one out of that hundred, one out of that hundred, to see Elijah, call 911 to report that Elijah looks sketchy and that the police should come and check him out. That is the reason why for police to make a lawful detainment, there has to be reasonable, articulable suspicion of a specific crime. There was none that night. They acted off solely report of a sketchy human being. To make a lawful detainment, officers cannot rely upon hunches, gut feelings, to conduct fishing expeditions, and now this is the one that applies to this case. Mere suspicion. But that's exactly what they did. One out of a hundred saw Elijah that night, called 911, and three heroes in blue took no report of a crime, only that somebody said he was suspicious. They immediately went hands-on, and we know how the story ends, of course. Guys, that's the reason why police are not supposed to detain on mere suspicion. As I write in the book, what is suspicious to one person is everyday life to someone else. And I can't for the life of me understand why is it after more than 50 years of the Terry stop and frisk being handed down by the U.S. Supreme Court that law enforcement all across the country, regardless of jurisdiction or agency, have no clue how to make or conduct or perform a lawful test. Stop. None. Somebody doesn't like what somebody's seeing, call 911. Somebody sees something they don't understand, call 911. Somebody sees an innocent young black man walking down a sidewalk, holding his white plastic bag with his assorted sundries from the convenience store, and called 911, the, the number set aside for reporting emergency. A million people could have seen Elijah that night and not thought anything of it, but it took one man to call night you see the point i'm making mere suspicion cannot be used as a reason to lawfully detain you can't even define suspicion what does it mean suspicion is defined as a feeling that someone may have done something wrong without having any proof and for some reason oath breakers cannot get it through their adult brains And I want to know, where are the patrol sergeants? Where are the lieutenants and the captains and the majors and the colonels? Why is it they're not reining their officers in? Oh, it's because they don't care. They tell their officers to do this. They're being trained to do this. And the officers don't care. That night, when as soon as those three killers with the Aurora, Colorado Police Department got that 911 call, 
they had already made their decision. They already made their minds up. They were going to jack that person up over an ID, make an unlawful detention because they wanted to make an arrest. They didn't understand the scope of their authority. They, it wouldn't have mattered if they had. Because of it, Elijah McLean's dead. So what are the, what's the chain of events again? Someone saw Elijah, thought he looked sketchy, called 911, who then put that report out to three killers from the department who showed up, went hands-on, took him to the ground, beat him up for 15 minutes. He was pumped full of ketamine, and he died in the hospital three days later. For what? For being sketchy. That's where we are in the United States now. See something, say something. Even if what you see is nothing, it's best just to go ahead and say something anyway. I've got news for the for the American people. Not a single American took part in the 9-11 attack, right? We weren't the 20th hijacker who chickened out. We didn't know anything about it. So why does the government now treat the American citizens as the terrorists? And now even American citizens are looking upon their fellow citizens as terrorists or otherwise evildoers. This country is weak. Its people are pathetic. They need to grow backbones. And we need to work together to do it right and stop using the 911 emergency system as if it were the complaint counter at Walmart. Elijah, we're not going to forget you. And our message, including from San Joaquin Valley Transparency, we won't forget you. We're going to keep your story alive, even though you are no longer alive. Courtesy of three killers in blue and a worthless American law enforcement agency who covered it up. And the only reason those officers were ultimately fired is because one night, shortly after they murdered Elijah, they went to the scene of the makeshift memorial and they took photographs of themselves mocking Elijah, ridiculing him, laughing at him, even recreating the chokehold they used. This is disgusting police behavior, yet it continues. This is inexcusable. And American law enforcement had damn well get its act together, get itself under control. And my message to the American people is, know your rights. Know your rights, because if you go through life not knowing your rights, that means the United States Constitution and all the protections that it affords us doesn't even exist. If you'd like, check out the book, Rise of the Oathbreakers. It's the one place you can learn your rights. Let's get this done, America. If the cops aren't going to rein themselves in, it's our job to rein them in. And it starts with knowing your rights. Cops love it when people don't know their rights. That's the power we have to change. That's how we know we now have a voice. We're no longer the voiceless. Let's do it for Elijah McClain and all the rest who the police have beaten up, killed, all the lives ruined, destroyed, simply because they can get away with it. Thank you, Dave McCray, for your hard work and determination to stay in this fight for Elijah McClain. I'm with you, amigo. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Let's get some justice for Elijah McClain. It's not our fault that police officers are so dangerously incompetent, but we sure do pay the price because of it.